excited to welcome you to Platform Leaders. I can see in the chat so many people from so many places, Argentina, UK, Belgium, Bologna in Italy. Wow, welcome everyone. A lot has happened since our last event in November. The world of platforms doesn't stay still. Platforms like Airbnb, Deliveroo, Roblox, Coursera, Bumble are now all public companies following their IPOs. Policymakers have also been very busy writing new regulations. The European Union, for example, published its proposals for regulating platforms with the Digital Market Act and the Digital Services Act. And academics have been busy trying to evaluate the proposed changes. As Petra said, uh, Platform Leaders brings together communities building the future of digital platforms. These are practitioners, and today we're going to hear from founders, entrepreneurs, advisors, and investors. We're also going to hear from policymakers, that's the politicians, the lawmakers, the regulators, the competition authorities, and academics, that's the, the educators and the researchers. Everyone was, brings a different perspective and looking at the same problem through different lenses can help us find solutions. And this is really the mission of platform leaders as we train to build the community. So today we're going to hear about uh, what it's like to build a platform from scratch. Our keynote is Nicholas Osberg, the CEO of co-founder of Delivery Hero, the largest delivery platform uh, in the world outside of China. We'll then move on to our panel on platform regulation, which is such an important topic right now. And we've tried to bring you the perspective of platform lawmakers, academics, and practitioners with MEP Stephanie Yoncourtin, Professor Annabelle Gower from University of Surrey and Said Business School, Max Beverton Palmer from the Tony Blair Institute, and Oliver Bethel from Google. And of course, digital talents need, the digital platforms need talents. And so, because if you've got the right people, then uh, everything follows. So what are the key skills and capabilities needed? How to learn about platform and ecosystem management? These are some of the questions that our speakers will address. And so we've got Anami Rees, MD and CEO, COO of Energy Innovation Hub, also former head of HR at eBay, PayPal and Skype. Peter Evans, who's the managing partner at the Platform Strategy Institute. Vina Moore, who's a head hunter at Russell Reynolds. And Olivier Van Kaster, who's the EU general manager for StockX. All of them will share their experience as investors, academics, talent hunters and practitioners. But actually, I'm very curious um, to find out from the audience, from you guys, what you are working on right now. And so we've got a poll for you. And Robin, um, if we could show the poll right now, that would be wonderful. So what would you say describes you best at the moment? Are you uh, thinking about launching a platform? Are you scaling a platform? Are you working for an established company? Um, interested in deploying or running platforms? Are you involved in writing uh, the law <laughs> and uh, new regulations? Or are you researching, teaching or studying the platform economy? If you could uh, take a few seconds to answer and then we are going to review the, uh, the answers in real time. Interesting, that's pretty balanced uh, actually mix in terms of uh, people involved in, uh, in launching, scaling or running platforms, people involved in platform regulation or people involved in researching and teaching platform economy. Very interesting. So thank you very much for that. So now without any further ado, it's my great pleasure to welcome Nicholas Osberg, the CEO and co-founder on Delivery Hero. So Nicholas uh, began his journey of building the world's leading local delivery platform back in Sweden in 2007 when he co-founded Pizza.nu. Delivery Hero is the largest global platform for online food ordering outside of China, operating in more than 40 international markets, 
partnering with hundreds of thousands of local restaurants and processing up to 5 million orders a day. So hello, Nicholas, and welcome to Platform Leaders. Hi there. Thanks for having me. Thank you. So you've had an incredible ride at Delivery Hero, um, literally going from zero to 100 orders per second at peak times in just a few years. Uh, so you, you've seen it all from launch to scaling and now managing a mature platform across many different countries and cultures. Uh, if you were to summarize the journey, uh, what would you say as a founder were the key challenges in the early days? Because I'm pretty sure that it hasn't been <laughs> easy <laughs> every day. So what was the key challenges at the beginning? And then as you scale the business, how did that change over time? And now today has a mature platform. Oh, I, I don't really know where to start. It's been, been an absolute roller coaster, has been uh, fantastic moments, there have been really hard moments, there have been sleepless nights, there have been uh, fears and worries and, and all of that in a, in a great mix. Um, but I think overall it's, it's been very good. I know you do things with, with people, you, 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 you share a path, you share a goal, you share an ambition and, and you're on that journey. And it, it's, it's like walking a, a steep mountain and uh, it's, it's really tough, but if you do it with a good, a good people, it's, it's beautiful to get up there. Then unfortunately as an entrepreneur, you're never happy when you get up there. You always see a bigger mountain or a bigger challenge or a bigger adventure. And um, I know we've been particularly ambitious uh, we also knew that we, we want to drive this company to a, a very large scale because we believe that only with scale, platform with scale can be um, can can drive the profitability, or at least if you want to charge small fees rather than big fees. Uh, and in particular for our industry, with with such a small margin, we knew that we had to get very big, uh, very quickly. So um, we had to grow faster than we could um, than than we could manage. Um, so running faster than you can run, and that means that you 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 add cost, which means you have to finance. And if you don't get the financing, you know that it's 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 over. And so I had many and you know, moments where I felt this this is never going to work. This uh, this, uh, and at the same time, you have to keep the shine up for all your employees and everyone around you and everyone who's supportive. That that. It will all be fine and, and good, but inside, if you 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 are tired and you are scared and you you are unsure at at moments, um, so so it's been anything but easy, um, and there's been moments I I would never want to live again, but overall I, I it's 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 also been an enormous amount of beautiful moment and I'm, I'm super happy that I have done the path I've done and I think we've come to a point where um, have a more stable team uh, more stable colleagues uh, better backing from all sort of ways and uh, uh, my role has become a little bit more of a um, making sure that we stay together setting out the vision the strategy uh, and, and that is a little bit less uh, solving urgent issues in the middle of the night. It's a little bit more planable. Uh, you can go for a walk while thinking. Uh, so it's, it, it has become a little bit more enjoyable. Um, well, at least for most of the times. Um, so so I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with what I'm doing right now. That's, that's great. Uh, now, Delivery Hero orchestrates an entire ecosystem with it's a multi-sided platform. So you've got the restaurants, you've got the riders, you've got obviously the clients and you know, needing their food as soon as possible. And you also have other partners. So how do you manage this central role and find the right balance between these various needs and wants, which sometimes are actually not aligned? And in particular, how do you ensure that the value is shared fairly between you know, all of those participants? Yeah, that that a very good question. It's 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 not easy. I, I I should maybe have picked a different industry that has less stakeholders because, uh, as you said, and we have, of course, the consumers. We have the riders. We have the shops or so the restaurants, um, and everyone needs to be happy. The whole ecosystem needs to be happy. 
Um, that, that means if, if customers no longer order, if, if it's not too expensive, uh, and if they, it's too expensive, then restaurants won't be happy because they don't get orders, and riders won't be happy because we'll have less work. Uh, and I don't know, riders needs to be happy, otherwise they will not come to work, and and um, and they, will, I don't know, they I don't know, we need to cater for their happiness, and at the same time we need to make restaurants happy. Um, so everyone needs to be happy there uh, in that, and, and on top of that, we want to care for the climate. So we also need to be caring for society in 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 this uh, sense. So that means we we kind of want to deliver things often by bike, ideally. We want to improve packaging. Uh, we we do all carbon offsetting for all packaging, all food um, that uh, or all delivery, sorry, that that we are doing. So we also need to take care of that that stakeholder base. So I think that that is hard because whatever, however you tweak it, there will always be someone feeling that, do I'm getting enough? Is it too low? Is it too high? Um, but, but I think overall, I think it works really well. Um, I think our strategy has always been that we want to be very, very efficient such that we can reach profitability through a very small margin. Uh, so therefore, I, I think we are aiming for I don't know, 11% of the food value as, as a margin on the order. But from there, we have to pay marketing, technology. We have to pay all our 40,000 employees uh, with that small margin. Um, and, and, that, that, and we are not even there. Uh, so we have to get even more efficient to get there. So even as, if we did 8.6 million order the other day and we averaged close to 8 million per day, um, it's still not enough scale for us to get profitability on, on, on the margin of a charge. So, um, but, but then the question is with the remaining 90 or so percent of what we're selling, like how is that allocated between all parties to make everyone happy? Um, and, and that's surely not easy. Um, do, you have, do you have some specific governance rules in terms of you know, how, do you, how you allocate you know, that, that value created you know, between the participants. So, I mean, what? How do you think about this? Well, it, it also a little bit of, of market economy, and of course, we, we 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 have to step in if we feel like that market economy is somehow wouldn't work. But, but of course, if 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 we um, charge too much to restaurants, they will be unhappy. They will not be on the platform. Then our customers will not be happy. Um, if uh, if we pay riders double the salary then of course restaurants will be very unhappy and uh, so will consumers and also riders because then there will be fewer riders who can work because everyone won't want to be a rider um, because you can make a, a double income so uh, so then we'll have fewer uh, riders being able to take part of that opportunity so so i think that's why it becomes a little bit of of, of, of a market dynamic um, and I think in general, as we're scaling so fast and we need so many people joining. So in the end, the ones taking the, the loss, that's, that's delivery hero, um, despite, despite uh, the, the, the scale and the, the size, we're still highly loss making because we have to pay a lot to our riders. We have to be very nice to our restaurants. We have to, um, um care for, for, uh, uh, our consumers and all stakeholders as well. So, and, and we hope, of course, that eventually, if we can double or keep on doubling our business to even larger, that even under a small margin, we can make economics to work. Um, and, uh, um, but, but there is no tool that, that, that we say, um, well, there are tools when we feel like if, if, if compensation for the riders, for example, would go below minimum wage, we will have a problem. We, we don't want to go. So we have to make sure that we significantly overpay uh, or pay significantly more. Otherwise, we don't get rider. But even if we would get rider for a lower pay, that, that is where the emotional and, and, and where we, we have to look ourselves in the mirror and feel happy and, and feeling that we're building something sustainable. But sure. Beyond that, there's sure. restaurants and riders. Um, Sure. So let's talk about COVID br briefly because COVID has had a massive impact on, on restaurants and, and, and some shops as well um, because they had to close their physical locations for months. So how have you managed to help restaurants in that time? And 
what's been the impact of Delivery Hero on, on the community? Yes, um, for us has been a, a little bit mixed. So Europe, of course, there was been certain lockdowns and, and uh, a lot of uh, shops and, and, and restaurants really came for asking for our help. Um, and uh, we, we've done a lot of initiatives to help there. We, we waived a lot of fees uh, so that restaurant shops can come on board. We waived also uh, and the, the delivery fees and other things to making sure they can get orders. We did certain special promotions to get orders. And in general, we felt like that's, that's what we need. If there's something they need, then it's actually more business. Um, and, and that's something we're good at, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, to help them drive that business. So um, th that's, that's something that we have done. But we also done a lot of other help outside of community being uh, giving away uh, millions of, of food. We have been transporting medical devices and medicines and other things on a pro forma or pro bono basis. Um, and uh, then if you look at other regions, then there were complete curfews and we, we couldn't even deliver in, in some of our largest markets. So we, of course, had no orders for a long time in, in markets like Kuwait and, and so on. And then in Asia, the impact hasn't really been there. So on a net basis, the impact overall for the group has not been so large as one would I think, but in Europe has been a, a significant push. And I think the main change is probably that consumers have also realized and their eyes have been opening up for the possibility of getting something delivered. That is, is food, but also groceries and other items. Um, that that uh, the awareness of the service has, has definitely increased in the European area, at least. So, I mean, the, the theme of the event is um, is actually the future of digital platforms. And, you know, I'm curious, what's the, how do you see the future of Delivery Hero going forward? So you've talked about scale, um, but um, do you have, do you have plans for uh, new, new services going forward as well? Oh, we, we are ambitious company. We have always said this about new service and how we can make it better and, and, and for, for everyone. And, and uh, that means additional services, things that we believe that customers would appreciate. Um, there will also be ways of how, how can we further save money and make it better for the, the, the ecosystem, even be able to uh, reduce margins even more um, and still get there. Um, so so there, there's a lot of things that we're working on, additional services um, that could be to help restaurants with payments. They pay a lot of fees to, to Visa and MasterCard and, and other companies. And, and of course, we have size and scale and, and, and those can be things that we can help them with. Uh, there will be things like um, know, buying, buying into restaurants that uh, as, as a large unit of restaurants, they can help, we can help them um, reducing the cost for their, for their items such that they can have more margins. And, and it is of course uh, an industry with operated very low margins in the first place. So, so if we can help them to, to further reduce and, and, and their, uh, help them with packaging, I don't know, both from an environmental point of view, but also that and the consumers ask for better packaging, more environmentally friendly. And here we can help sourcing, help uh, know, setting up uh, facilities for, for, for printing and developing um, these, uh, this packaging uh, such that it can get cheaper packaging, but also better packaging for, for consumers and environment. Uh, so here, for example, I invest in biolution, a, a, um, um, uh, then we have also looked, yeah, we, there are so many things that we have looked at uh, how we can help uh, and how we can be supportive both to consumers, additional services there as well as to, to restaurants and, and, and also. Now you're also thinking of uh, expanding um, the proposition to uh, other, other businesses than restaurants. You know, I've read about the Q commerce. Uh, is it something that is also going to, uh, to happen in, uh, to be deployed in Europe? Yeah, and we, we see there is a big value for, 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 for doing so. So as customers start seeing that they can get certain things delivered um, 
and they see the value of that. But unfortunately, the infrastructure for that doesn't really allow it, at least not economically. So if you would have to do delivery from a large retail store, the, the picking of the items takes too much. The, there are wrong locations, too far distance for, for, from the consumer. So the delivery distances are too long. Um, the replenishment uh, to the stores are not frequent enough because then there would be, and it is catered for, for consumers going into the store. So therefore, we have done what you, you know, within the quick commerce, we have built uh, DMARs. So those are uh, warehouses, central warehouses. Uh, with roughly 3,000 items or SKUs um, that customers can order from that are very closely located to the customers, so shorter delivery distances, and they are tailored and more automated such that we can reduce cost of actually picking and shipping these items to consumers. And by doing so, we, we, we can actually do delivery of items and, and still uh, hopefully <laughs> making a margin there. Um, that is economical also for us um, one day. Um, we, uh, so, so we have roughly 550 or so of those warehouses. Then um, and we also have those stores and shops. And I think that's important. So we have 30, 30, 40,000 local shops who wants to sell online. So we give them the tools, we give them our logistic fleet and our visibility for them to stay alive. And I think that is a core because if we, don't enable stores to do both offline as well as online, I think they will also struggle because consumers more and more order online. And if they cannot compete by doing delivery, they will not get in store enough. And you will have a problem with those stores surviving long term against other large e-commerce companies shipping from China into central warehouses and distribution. So therefore, it is something that is very close to my heart to, to help there, to making sure they can have both offline and online and supporting them with the tools and services. And this this is a business where I'm, I'm not even sure we'll make, it will be even lower margins, but I'm, I'm, I'm very passionate about uh, helping that local community. So that, that's one thing. Uh, maybe with scale, we'll also get there economically. That's great. So uh, I think we, we only have a couple of minutes uh, left. Um, I've got so many more questions to ask you. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll ask one that is linked to the next panel on, on, uh, on regulation, because there's been lots of activity going on in that field. And you know, we've seen um, in the UK, there's been a ruling from the highest, uh, sorry, from the Supreme Court, the, the highest court in the UK back in March, uh, where, you know, Uber has agreed to classify 70,000 of its uh, UK workers as workers entitled to benefits. Now, Delivery Hero doesn't operate in the UK, but um, in your opinion, what's the risk of more countries to follow suit? And uh, you know, if so, what, what would be the, the impact on, uh, on businesses like yours? Yeah, so I think, first of all, we have to keep in mind that how logistic happens today is often that restaurant and self will have someone uh, delivering for them. Usually, generically speaking, usually uninsured and, and uh, without safety and security and, and, and so on. So I think the fact that we actually, with our efficiency, we can, we can pay more, we can pay better, we can give a certain security and safety. Um, but I think that the, the largest, um, the largest value we can give to, to riders is that we can give flexibility. So um, there is a large part of the population who, who wants to have the flexibility of picking up kids during the day, or maybe the study on the side, or maybe they lost a job and quickly want to have a, a, an alternative to fall back on um, uh, for a time. So I think the, the largest value we can give is flexibility. The other value that we the riders want to have is the maximizing the, the payment. They, they, they want to have, of course, as much as, as possible. So we have to build a system that is, I believe, that is the most, the, the most effective and efficient for the ecosystem. That means otherwise it will be too expensive for restaurants or it becomes too expensive for consumers. And if one of those doesn't work, then there's also no, 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 no riders in the end um, that works out. So, we have to make it efficient. And I think currently, or, or currently legislation or regulation doesn't fully 
it's, it's, it's a little bit contradictive here because I think the best solution is still to keep that flexibility, uh, keep uh, what they want, which is uh, most wants to be freelance, but if we can give additional uh, safety, security, and, and pensions, so if, if legislation could allow platforms to actually contribute, or the writers would have to contribute to this, I think that would be the best of two worlds. Um, um, the alternative is, of course, we've done in Norway, where actually legislation has allowed us to have uh, to write it to shoes. So we 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 and we don't decide for them, but they decide. Do they want to be freelance or do they want to be employed? Uh, in most cases, they want to be freelance because they can make more money. Um, but there's also some people who wants to be employed. Um, so. Um, so I think there is also a solution that can be found uh, and, and can potentially work out in, in some markets. But I think we definitely have to be smart and find what is actually optimized. And I think if we can give flexibility and we can maximize pay um, and, and keep also restaurants happy in, in this ecosystem, I think that's where we should start for. So I don't have all the solutions, but I, I, I really hope that it can be a, a constructive dialogue, get into the, to, to, to the optimal setup. Um, uh, we, we surely want to make, uh, the, the, the better we can make the lives of the riders, the, the better we will flourish. So. Well, excellent. I mean, thank you. Uh, that was a fascinating uh, uh, conversation, Nicholas. I thank you so much uh, for you know, being so open and, and candid with us. And um, I'm now going to hand over to Petra. Thank you again, Nicholas. Thank, Thank you. you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you.